Um, so they're going to get a wire hooked up here, and uh, if we can have the participation group go first, and then we'll go back to the information overload. So participation in the current system. I'm Nancy Davenport, University Librarian, American University. Good morning, Polly Ann France of the Grants Resource Center at the American Association of State Colleges and Universities. Hello, Barbara DeFelice, Scarling Communication at Dartmouth. Jane McAuliffe, Head of National and International Outreach at the Library of Congress. Michael Wolf, I'm the Executive Director at Authors Alliance. Jeff Mackey Mason, University Librarian and Professor of Information and Economics, UC Berkeley. Gary Evanick, Director of Publication Practices at GlaxoSmithKline Pharmaceuticals. Julie Hannaford, Deputy Chief Librarian at the University of Toronto. Jennifer Pesinelli, Federation of American Societies for Experimental Biology. We're waiting for the slides. Sure. Also in our group is Crispin Tyler from American, American, Society, of Plant American Society of Plant Biology, who's, you're pointing. Oh, and there's Paul, yes, who is not here today, and also Paul Royster, who will introduce himself. <laughs> Paul Royster with my coffee, um, University of Nebraska Libraries. Thank you. Okay, and the slides are up, so we'll get started. Good morning. Our charge was to address participation in a world characterized by open scholarship. Yes, no? Wrong one. Oh, it is working. Right. It's not doing my screen, though. That's not <laughs> confusing. Sorry, let me synchronize these. OK. We interpreted our charge as authors first, and so we are the Lorax, speaking for the authors. Authors are the original content creators. They are, for the most part, selecting their publication venues, or at least selecting where they hope they will be published. And we find from recent survey evidence that they're increasingly supportive of open scholarship uh, publications. So we imagined what might be the perfect world for authors in an open scholarship world and use that to motivate us and develop our objectives for recommendations. In this perfect world of open scholarship, we imagine that authors have clear, expansive, and persistent rights over their works, that they are enabled to implement flexible licensing terms for use of those works, that it's inexpensive or free to engage in the publishing of their content, that there's a thriving monograph environment. The administrative burdens and time costs are low on publishers, and that there are more and better metrics for assessing the impact of their scholarship. If this were the world, then we imagine that authors would gleefully and fully participate. So our question is then, or how can we help this world to occur? We considered a number of inhibitors and challenges, things between us and this imagined world, with the idea that if we reduce these, then people will participate more. Among them, we discussed the fact that for many authors, they have perceptions or attitudes that range from apathy towards active opposition to open scholarship for a variety of reasons. 
for instance, a perception that anyone who needs to read my scholarship already has access to the journals, and so what's the problem? too busy to participate, or even a vested interest in the status quo. Many people identify strongly, for instance, with their academic society's scholarly journal, and they want to continue supporting that as part of their professional identity. If scholars are to pay more of the publishing costs up front, then funding support will be need to be redirected towards them to support those fees to enable them to afford to publish and to remain inclusive in who is able to publish. The envi environment for rights for authors needs to be consistent. There are a lot of inconsistencies in the ways that different open source publications treat authors' rights, which causes confusion and administrative burdens and resistance. Some authors fear that if they make their work too widely disseminated too quickly, they will be subject to being scooped or experiencing plagiarism. We think these fears are mostly misguided, but they need to be addressed. Either the fears need to be overcome or the conditions need to be changed that cause the fears. We also find that many authors experience a lack of fulfillment of open source obligations on the part of publishers, that they are Things are released in different locations under different types of control. It may be difficult to find open access publications, and that generally they're inhibitors to access despite nominally being open access, and that's another inhibitor. To reduce these, we offer some proposals. In short, our proposals are oriented around towards a simple set of behavioral principles. In order to increase participation, we want to increase the benefits to authors of participating in the system or lower the costs to them of doing so. So first, given that many of the inhibitors we identified concerned misconceptions, confusion, fears, or varied perceptions about the value or the cost of open scholarship, we felt that we as the community promoting, we as a community promoting open scholarship, should address collective effort to produce more consistent and concise messaging, clarifying the nature of the world and simplifying it for those who want to participate in it or are considering participating. Second, to overcome apathy and resistance, we need more and better venues. We need to make the open publishing opportunities more desirable for authors. Editorial quality is, of course, the first consideration for scholars. But open venues can also increase participation by adding more value for authors to the publications, making them a better place to publish. Third, the greater social value from open scholarship justifies additional resource commitments by universities, funding agencies, et cetera. If open scholarship is worth more to society, society should be directing more resources towards it. In any case, if we are moving towards open scholarship, we should be figuring out ways to redirect existing resources supporting closed scholarship towards supporting open scholarship. For example, in universities, some inducements that might increase author participation include various financial and other rewards, especially for considering the cost as well as the quality of where an author submits his or her publications. We might try to reduce administrative burden on authors, particularly well, both for green and gold participation, and redirecting funds away from closed towards open venues. These greater investments are likely to pay off in the future through lower overall costs of publishing, which will help to underwrite some of the upfront costs of moving in that direction. We also feel there's relatively universal recognition, and we hear about it from almost all of the groups in this meeting of the importance of influencing faculty governance bodies to support open behaviors, the use of open venues, uh, in, particularly in early stage career authors. And we think there are ways that the community can give greater recognition through awards and other forms of recognition to help establish social norms that encourage people to participate and recognize the benefits of open scholarship. We close with some things on which we think we need more information or more information will help us advance participation by authors. Better understanding of pre and post tenure publishing behaviors and where, whether perhaps we should be focusing on post tenure scholars as the vanguard for open scholarship to make the shift. And we hypothesize that we don't really have the data. A lot of information about the impacts of open on innovation, on social advancement, on inclusivity, and so forth. 
We all believe, I think it's pretty safe to say, we all believe in this room that open is good for society, but that is largely a belief. We don't have a lot of empirical evidence about what impacts it actually has. So we should be looking at the outcomes of open. Does it actually increase innovation? Does it actually improve societies with fewer resources? And if we have that evidence, then we'll be able to make a stronger case for participation. We need to understand better cooperative and collective funding models to figure out how to fund the transition to different forms of publishing uh, and understand the impact of open access monographs on sale of print monographs, since print monographs are still required for much learning and scholarship. And if digital monographs sufficiently undercut print monographs, the economies of scale will make it impossible to print. So we need to understand that. And we thought to come full circle that if we are going to engage in a number of activities to advance participation in open, we should study the impact of those proposals on participation and see if our ideas are actually working. Those are ideas. I want to appreciate uh, the work of everybody on this team. We had a very good time, a very collaborative group, and very effective with a lot of participation, and we thank you all.